Some of us are balanced, but this girl is super balanced. Her wow. inspirational Instagram account caught my intention and I wanted to know what her secret was to a super balanced and happy life. Seca is a beautiful and successful model who moved from Serbia to the city of angels. Little did she know that a relocation was just the beginning of her personal spiritual journey. <gasps> Welcome wow, to I my wanna... podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. You see? It's also so good to see you after so long. Yeah, I cannot believe that you actually also moved from Serbia, from Europe, eh, to yeah. this beautiful city, Los Angeles. Sometimes I'm also like, oh, it's been four years and it gets me struck because it, fl it flew by. <laughs> so Yeah, time just flies here yeah. in LA. It's yeah. like a, I, I call it a um, um, Bermuda Triangle when it comes oh, to time. Oh, exactly. I feel like, honestly, for me, it's like a year. I mean, what, like my personal feeling. It's been a year. And then I'm like thinking today, because I know I'm going to introduce myself and say yeah. something like, oh, I've been here for four years. Oh four my God. Years. Yes. So we met at the same year. Yes. When you actually moved to LA. Actually, yeah. And I remember you were definitely on a spiritual journey, oh, like soul searching. That was like right? that time. Well, that's exactly why I moved here. Because I was going through a spiritual awakening. At that time, I didn't know what it was. But actually, when you met me, that's when I was like just coming up from the rock bottom recently, like maybe a few months before that I was really low and I felt really bad. And LA was the city that kind of really made me feel like I'm not alone on that path because mm -hmm. you know where I come from and like the mentality and everything like from our part of Europe, it's not really supporting when it comes to, I don't know, either awakening or self-development and these kind of things. So here I found books and people and communities that like meditated for the first time. And then you told me about Think and Grow Rich and kind of opened my <laughs> like, universe, you know? Yeah. And that's how, that's why I stayed. So you think that I helped you with one like book? Oh. <laughs> with just one book? <laughs> wow. I will never forget like where we sat. We were in a blue bottle in North Robertson. I remember like this, these little details always. And when you told me about this book, like Tetsa, Bob Proctor, <laughs> you told me that. Yes. I was like, who is this person? And then I started listening. Well, thanks to you, actually. That's a part of my business today. I mean... How I gained this is actually amazing. I never I never told you this, but how I gained the courage to actually start my own page and the business and everything. It's been of course through this self work that I did, but through that book, that's when I realized, oh, I can actually do this. Oh my god, this makes me so emo <laughs> really? emotional. You 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 didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> actually, I can make people cry for the good reasons. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was flying back and forth for the seminars with Bob Proctor and I was very into this. Oh you know, and this is also my business today. I'm I coaching know. people. Yeah, I you saw it on Instagram, but I never thought that I contributed yeah. something <laughs> to your life just by oh being my myself. Of course. <laughs> A lot. You're not even aware. I mean, I never told you, but... Thank you. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Well, That was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Um, a good think, start. Yeah, you cannot change the whole world, but you can have an impact on someone else's life. And you're not even aware of it. You just have to be yourself. Exactly. And just to feel when to give advice. when to. I always like to give book recommendations when I feel the moment uh -huh. as well. This is how you teach people because you cannot mm -hmm. really tell them, oh, this is how it's going to be or you have to do this because of that. You, you can show them the path and then they decide whether to take it or not. By the way, I have to read the book again. I know think it's so good. It's think so and good. grow rich. Because you have to think in order yeah, to grow rich. Exactly. But not rich only in a materialistic way, but also rich in life. I really want to know what happened to you four or five years ago that you oh. had these struggles and questioning your life, questioning everything you were doing because you found yourself in a dark place. So let's go back in 2018. What happened? Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I have to recall this memory because probably That's fine. it is emotional. I might cry too. <laughs> but I'm we, fine can with cry. It. we can cry. <laughs> we can cry. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Well, the thing that happened is that when I started my studies of psychology in Serbia, I mean, that was like the first time in five years that I actually stopped for a moment and like kind of settled down in Belgrade for a while. And I had a beautiful friendships, relationship, and work there. But I, actually, what happened is that I never did any self work or like prioritize myself 
being and like self-care, self-love, all these concepts were like so uh, odd to me because I was into psychology, but in terms of analyzing others, never myself. So when I stopped and when I like kind of slowed down and started to study and change my routine, mm -hmm. well, that's when I actually started to develop health anxiety. So my body was somatically uh, producing some, some, I mean, I had this like very weird, it was not a panic attack. I mean, it's, it's usually how, how you feel the anxiety. Yeah, and anxiety. Then when it yeah. starts like that. At first it starts like little voices. In your head? Yes. And, and then you have the yeah. brick wall that falls down. <laughs> yeah. But I think yeah. for me, I mean, w what is different in uh, health anxiety comparing to like other sides of anxieties is that I was afraid that I will get cancer and die. So that was my thought. You'll get cancer. That like, was uh, the specific Is that illness. a hypochondria thing? It, then later it developed to that. But when you have a hypochondria, you go to the doctors always. Yeah. I, I didn't go to doctor. I mean... It was a long, long, long journey. So it didn't start with going to doctors first. It was just like me Googling symptoms. And then when you when you start to have, I mean, of course, when you have anxiety, your body is uh, producing some nudges and symptoms that are showing that you're not feeling well. So mm -hmm. I was getting, I was thinking that these were the signs that I'm getting ill, which is cr so crazy. I mean, to think about this now, because after COVID and everything, and I'm going to tell you the story about it. Because I went through a whole pandemic with zero fear of getting sick and dying. I, I just knew it was not, it's not going to happen. You had to prepare yourself first. But I had to yeah. go through a lot of um, self-work and like deep subconscious um, journey to realize that it was never about illness. It was about something else. This is when the balance, balance comes because you asked me about these things and we we're going to talk about it. But in general, 2018, I was not aware that this is actually, that I'm awakening and I'm starting to pay attention to myself. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of pain, like physical pain in stomach, in head, my arms, nerves, twitches, tingling. I mean, a lot of, a lot of things. And this is crazy because nobody knew about it. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I was obsessing over every little physical tension that I had in my body for wow. a full year before I realized that I actually need help. Was that <laughs> at this time where you also had a very successful career in Serbia? Well, this is the thing. It kind of, because I slowed down, I wanted to focus more on studying. So I was still working and I had to put this face. And I had to really, I mean, I was studying psychology. So to me, to think that I'm going crazy in that right now actually was not really like, oh, I cannot really talk about this to almost anybody. Oh, that's so, interesting. So you're studying psychology. Yeah. At the same time, you're going through a dark like, state of mind. Very dark. Yeah. Yeah. But do you see uh, now that you're doing the coaching? Yeah. What can you use from your studies when it comes to coaching people about a positive perspective for their future lives? Oh, well, this is completely another story. Mm -hmm. I mean, now when I connect the dots, uh, well, if I knew at that time, you know, I was like, uh, I was reading and studying neurobiology, for example, preparing for exams. And I was able to connect like my symptoms with like actual theory there. And that's how I realized like what is happening to me. So to me, it didn't take a lot of time to realize what is actually going on. But I could not think in any way positively because my body was in pain and I was like in fear. You cannot see the way out. It just goes deeper and deeper. And the only thing you want is to escape it. So mm -hmm. that's when I started uh, drinking. So that was my first, I mean, attempt to shut down these feelings and like this fear that I'm going to get sick and die. And uh, it, this was before pandemic. So this is funny to me because when later everybody were in fear of getting s ill and mm -hmm. dying, I was like, <laughs> I mean, I could see the bigger picture. So it, it's never about having fear of that itself. It's about not being fulfilled in your own life. So if you're living your purpose and true and really being authentic, you don't care. I mean, generally, if you die tomorrow, it was worth it because you had your life mm -hmm. and I didn't have it. How do you know that you're living a purpose in life? I have no fear of dying. Same. Wait, I can I die mean, right now with you and I'm so happy. Because <laughs> it's a personal choice that we're here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to be honest, I don't want to because yeah. I, I have plans. I have, I'm, I'm ambitious still and <laughs> I love living. But I don't have this kind of feeling of, uh, oh, I, I did not do well. I'm not doing enough. What if, what if something happens to me? Like, 
and I go like, what what was this for? Everything, you know. Yeah. So that's when I actually started realizing that I have to change something in my life. And that's how I started my healing. First with breath works and then meditations. And then I came to LA. I came to LA because I had to escape these patterns of my really toxic kind of lifestyle. Was so, it also your uh, surrounding, like the people in your life, also family mm, members, students in the university? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like it adds up at the end, right? Definitely. I, well, the thing is that when this anxiety showed up and I started really taking a look closer look to myself, I realized I never, I was always there for other people and I was always invested in their lives, wanting to help. I, I'm like, um, you know, this, I don't want to say charity person. Well, you're but the I, angel, that's yeah, why I you're mean, here in that city, in this yeah. city. Because <laughs> right now, you yeah. are an angel, yeah. Thank you so much. But at that point, like, I always wanted to solve others' problems. So I realized that I need to focus on myself. Bef because I was afraid that I'm gonna get sick and die. So I was like, well, I need to start living healthy. And that requires self time and like spending time how I really want and what's really helping me. So that unfortunately meant really distancing myself from a lot of people in my life. Not because they were bad or like toxic in any terms, but because I was so focused on them and mm -hmm. like relationships I had with them, like my family and them and then relationship and friendships that I could not, I, w I felt guilty if I would like spending a lot of time on my own, doing my own things. I did not understand the concept of like self-care and self-work, you know. I thought it's uh, selfish. But it's not because it's healing. It is, but that's not how we taught. Mm -hmm. Especially us women in Balkans. Yeah. yeah. Right. The Serbian culture is very special because <laughs> if you um, pull yourself out of a circle, like you, you want to spend time a little bit for yourself. Mm -hmm. They think like you're selfish. Something is wrong with you. Yeah. You need a doctor. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, are you mad? Are you are you angry at somebody? Yeah. Like what's wrong? You're quiet. Come you sit know? with us and watch TV. No. Yeah. Maybe I just want to go outside the living room yeah. and live my life. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. like spend time in quiet and like solitude. Mm -hmm. Right now this is completely normal because I have these habits in my family and friends and people like they know how I live right now. And I have very clear boundaries on what's important to me. I'm mm -hmm. very giving, like, person. I still give, and I'm there for my people. But I also need time for myself. So to me, it's, like, one hour for myself. I, I'm sitting, doing nothing, like, whatever, writing mm -hmm. something. I, I don't answer the phone, you know? Same. <laughs> Because you're in the moment. Exactly, yeah. And it's mm -hmm. so important. And then after that, you can give more once yeah. you have it for yourself. I see that. <laughs> When did you experience that your mindset has changed mm -hmm. through the new routines that you applied in your life? When could you see for yourself, like, this is now a turning point for myself in my awareness level? Well, when the pain stopped, I mean, for example, I had this, like, my eye was twitching for two weeks. I had really, like, my anxiety was completely somatic. So my body, my nervous system was under so much stress. I had this like problems with my period, or, like I had cramps. Like it was so, I was under so much tension that mm -hmm. you cannot think that you're well. You know you're not well. Your body is, is showing you. So first signs of me really getting better was actually my pain dissolving. I mean, the twitches and the tinglings and like, it was gratitude actually. Well, this this could sound crazy right now when I tell this But to people. But it's not. It's not. It's yeah. like, yeah. well, the first two, three days, I started really like, oh, I'm gonna do this gratitude, like a challenge, something that was like, I hit the rock bottom. I was in LA at that point, like two months mm -hmm. maybe before I met you. I was like, and there's so much stress and I have to work My, my work requires me to look well, so I cannot really, like, I mean, I cannot feel, like, crazy anymore. So I needed to change something. And then when I started, like, with gratitude and with writing and with, like, really consciously breathing, I mean, those simple things that I never did before, this was, like, oh, my mm -hmm. body feels better in the morning. I'm not thinking about cancer anymore because it was just like my obsessive thought, you know? Yeah, but then you created a laser-sharp focus on gratitude. Yes. Yes, and yeah. my life changed within 10 days. I swear to God, like <sighs> to this day. <laughs> That is the miracle of this work, yes, right? Yes, it is. And people think 
that it's not going to happen to them because they're not even trying it. Mm -hmm. But you tell them like over and over again, try it out. You will see something will change. It's like a miracle. But they feel safe or no, they're just comfortable or lazy working on themselves. And that hurts when you see potential in a person and they're not moving from A to B. And you're like, I can see you already at B, like, you know, at the B point, but you're not moving. But I can see it for yourself. It's hard when you like, I stopped (sighs) doing that. I mean, that's, this is one of the first things I stopped, like, trying to change somebody that's not ready for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's one thing to work with somebody like a coach or, like, spiritual advisor, the things I'm doing today. Well, those are the people that come and they're like, I need help and I want help. And when yeah. you want it, when you need it, you're ready because you want to learn. Yeah. And when you're in this fear state and this ego state of, like, oh, I was in this state for, like, a full year. I mean, I don't want to deny it. I was like, oh, everything is like fine. I'm having some problems. Mm-hmm. Everybody's anxious. Everybody, everybody's crazy. I'm fine. Yeah. So that's why I could not really change anything because I was... You were prepared. Yes. You went through the whole shit, so to say, because then you yeah. were able to help other people during oh, the pandemic. Yes. That's I feel exactly the same. Yeah. Well, that's... So uh, interesting. A lot of people, a lot of people went yeah. through a lot of, like... Weird and bad things, yeah. uncomfortable, 2018, 19, even 17, to kind of get... I mean, this is what I see now, like, because a lot of people awakened during pandemic and, like, starting doing healing work or, like, motivational work. You start a podcast, you know, but you had to go through some things prior p- pandemic um, yeah. in order to be aware what's really happening. Mm-hmm. And what's happening is, like, this breakdown of, like, what we thought we have to do or we must do or who we have to be mm-hmm. and then really discover what you truly are oh okay speaking <laughs> about this um how does your content now how has your content changed over the years since you're paying more content uh, more attention to your um thoughts mm-hmm. and your energy uh well content on social media yeah yeah that yeah. i understood well i'm not I mean, depends because I have two accounts, like my personal private one and the other one that where I'm having my community. So, well, I'm going to speak for my personal because this is like, yeah, I, I don't really think in business purposes. Well, uh, it didn't really change a lot because I was always myself. I mean, I just really want to be who I am and be authentic. I was thinking, oh, maybe I should go try more this kind of tic- uh, TikTok. I mean, this kind of content, maybe I should mm-hmm. open TikTok. And I was thinking, like, if that if that can get me more clients and jobs, that's not me. If I feel like posting one code today, I'm going to do it. I don't care about likes. Yeah. I mean, if I post story about a book or something, it's just, like, because I wanted it. Sometimes I'm not using Instagram for a couple of days. Yeah. I mean, not posting anything. To me, it's only about, like, being in tune, like, what I'm going through right now and what I can share or show that can really have effect on somebody mm-hmm. so that's even if it's just one person but you know that yeah. you can change someone else's life because this life can change someone else's life definitely that's why we're telling these yeah. stories yeah that's why i'm open about it because i'm like i know that people are going through this being ashamed and like guilty for feeling it and this is i don't have any topic that i cannot talk about because i feel like yeah. my story i mean your story too we should share it for yeah. the better cause. <laughs> yeah, always. I always like to open up and be authentic and transparent because mm-hmm. this is, this feels so real here, you know? Yeah. And um, I've experienced that people told me like, oh, Mira, if you think it's tough here in LA, just pretend, like, just pretend you're fine and oh. pretend like to like a person. And I'm like, you know what? In this body system, oh, no. it you're feels Aquarius. so hard. My yes. too. I, I have like stellium in Aquarius. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> it feels so wrong. Yeah. yeah, I know. If I have an opinion that I want to share, I will be very straightforward and I will I will share it right away. And if I don't feel staying in a room with someone, I just leave. Exactly. It's it's my time, it's my energy, and I need to be happy for myself. So when I'm happy, <laughs> my business is happy. Everything, my followers are happy. Uh, yeah. My surroundings is happy. Yeah, your friends, your yeah. family, and most importantly, that's self-love. Like knowing what, what you do the best and like just staying in your truth. That's all. Yeah. And people think they have to try more harder. They don't. Nobody has to try harder. Like we just yeah. need to be more ourselves. Huh? Self acceptance. <laughs> and that's the thing. I believe that on social media, a lot is going on with like copy pasting people. Mm-hmm. 
And I see that people lose their indivi individuality. Mm -hmm. I can see it. And I'm like, when are they actually waking up and just posting whatever they like to post? It's not trendy. Maybe it's not you know, aesthetically beautiful, but it's who you are. Well, let me tell you my opinion. If you lose your authentic self, you never had it. It was like false self that you thought you were. Mm -hmm. Once you're really aware who you are and what's authentic to you, you cannot lose it because you cannot bear. Is what you're saying. I cannot. Mm -hmm. Like I, this I thing. That's why, because you're aware of who yeah. you are and then... To, to lose that, oh, sorry, to lose that would be just to change it for other ego identity for somebody's likes or like a attention validation. I understand there is like a deep psychological, you know, like why we're doing things we're doing. And of course, I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm like always 100 percent, you know, I'm I'm trying, I'm striving, I'm going towards it. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's more important how I feel, you know, like after posting this, how I think why would I post this trend if it's not trendy for me, if I don't find it funny? For example, that's how I'm thinking. <laughs> you know, I like to always step a little back and just watch how the trend goes. And mm -hmm. maybe then if I like it, I will join them. Yeah. The same like with fear and the pandemic. I was mm -hmm. like just f um, looking at from another other perspective and I'm like, okay, let's see what's going on. They're shopping like the toilet paper in the <laughs> supermarket and everything, like making sure that they're not going to mm -hmm. die soon yeah. when it comes to food. And I was like, I'm going to do my everyday thing and go every day for grocery shopping and pretending the world is nice. You know, my, my pandemic yeah. was soul searching. I was in every country as we oh, just yeah, spoke before. Also, yeah, because... Yeah, I broke up after 12 years oh and God. I wanted to go through everything wow. by myself. And it felt so freeing and so good. And it prepared me, as you said, exactly. like for this moment, uh, w w what we do right now, mm -hmm. coaching people, like mm -hmm. show me your story. Mm -hmm. And I was very open and transparent all the time. So actually the whole world knows my story because I would talk about it in, in, in my podcast yeah. or you can read my interviews and you can tell that from A to B, Mira did the action part. You did it, yeah. And that's why you're here today. Thank but you. But you went for it. Because you also hit, I mean, rock bottom. Or like You had a breaking point. And that's where you, when you realize, right? Like, oh, I can stay here and be sad. And like, okay, it's healthy to be sad. But like staying in this loop for a while gets you mm -hmm. nowhere. I mean, just sitting and waiting for somebody else to come and like save you. It's not no. gonna happen. So, yeah. as you said, like you told me, after seven, eight weeks, you found this studio. I'm like, everything was like, yeah, quickly <laughs> coming. Well, you're. The, this is because you're like how you say. There is a word in Serbian that I love. It's called protočna. <laughs> what means that word? Uh, it's like when, when energy is flowing, flowing through you, like flowing. Yeah. yeah, you're going with the flow. Yeah, and everything comes quicker. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. And that was a trial for me. I came to this city with only a vision. Mm. I visualized this thing. I visualized people around me. I visualized, visualized like, uh, you know, posting this content, this kind of content. So I was thinking from the end result when mm -hmm. I came to LA, how things were moving for me. I love that. This is how the universe just works for you. When you have a vision, you just think of the end result mm -hmm. and you trust the process. It's so easy, but... We cannot, we cannot have it, we, we cannot hold it in our hands because it's invisible. It's an energy. Yeah. <laughs> and it scares you. It freaks you out because it's not the phone that you can have in your, in, in your hands. It's just feeling. It's uh, the trusting part can be hard. Yeah. To trust invisible, we are not taught that. No. I mean, before we had this phone, what we had, just yeah. the idea of having the phone that is going to come to us. But because yeah. people are having it, like we all have our phones in the hands. So it's easier to believe that you can have it too. Yeah. But when you have something special, like a unique dream that nobody did in your family, like when you're the first person in your generation to like break the stigma, it's so hard to believe it because you're like, it's, you know, I'm inventing something. You're like a little scientist <laughs> inventing yeah. your own life. Yeah, you're so right. And this is exactly the point where I discovered for myself, if none of my family members did what I do right now mm -hmm. in the past generations, mm -hmm. I'm going to look out for people who actually did it. Exactly. So that's why YouTube has been the best teacher to me the last 12 years. Such a blessing. <laughs> yeah. YouTube. yeah. Bob Proctor. I mean, the, that's yeah. why I also love like reading these kind of things because you learn about people who did it. Like mm -hmm. if they did it. Outside it, your family circle. Yeah. Yeah, 
It helps. Like it, it gives inspiration, and motivation, just to keep moving. You mm -hmm. know, and when you find yourself in a place where everything is hard, you cannot change the whole place, but you can either change yourself, or you can just move. Exactly, <laughs> leave the place. Leave yeah. the place. Yeah. Yeah. Go to a place where you feel more comfortable. It's all about the energies. Whenever I sit down in a room, I go by energies. Where do I feel like this mm. is the place where I belong? I so love that about you, that you're like so in tune. With the energy? Yes. I mean, yeah. I can bet that you, the friends around you like are completely different than like three or four years ago. Maybe not completely, but yeah. you also probably changed like your Everything. people's circle. Wow. Everyone I had from my past relationship left me. That's I'm telling you, because I'm the bad one. Because I broke up. Oh, thank God they left you. Thank God. And open now, space. <laughs> yes, I look back and I see every person that was in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why? I, I don't see a connection now to this person because there has never been truly oh. a deep connection. It was just mm. like, it looks nice in a picture to be together. But when it comes to... Oh, wow. Now, a real situation in life, and you see who's turning your, their back on you, then you can tell, aha, uh -huh, now I see. I don't have to, uh, to give you a reason to stay with me. No, mm -hmm. either it comes out of, of your heart, and then I know it was a real connection, or there was just like a facade. For some uh -huh. other purposes, like their own intentions mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. But they made you a huge favor then. I of mean, course, I was not crying over it. Yeah. Because I knew at this point when, when I was alone, I mean, that's now my story. And we haven't, mm. <laughs> we haven't, we haven't even seen each other. I know, yet. I know. <laughs> okay, maybe it's meant to be that I'm sharing this now in this podcast with you. Well, I'd love to hear it. And it's a frequency. It. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, what happened then when I broke up? Everyone turned their back on me. I only had like three, four closest friends and my family. And I'm like, okay, now I have to focus. How can I build the life that I always wanted to live? Laser sharp focus mm -hmm. to my visions. Everything else didn't matter to me. You can tell that I'm the biggest yeah, you know? <laughs> I know, I know exactly where you, you wanted to sit. Right? And if you <laughs> criticize me to just go after my full potential then who are you as a person to give me the bad vibe for my vision? Like, all I want is just to create myself in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. That should be something that you're going to clap your hands, right? Yeah, but how can they do it if they're not doing it for themselves? Thank you. I mean, it's like... Yeah, I started from scratch yeah. and I built this wonderful house that I have right now Aww. with the podcast, with, with my coachings, with and an apartment where I feel safe and like at home. I created wow. a new life for myself within 24 months. How is it for you when you want this one thing so bad and you're like, when is it going to come? When is it going to come? And you're sitting there in faith, but it's not coming yet. And then it happens a year, two, four years later. And you're like, now I see the lesson. But what do you do in this season of waiting? I'm just reflecting on my own life. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like, well, when I'm, yeah. when I'm waiting for something like bigger i mean bigger than where i am right now yeah it only means bigger where than i am in terms of energetics like i need to grow energetically while the mm -hmm. wish is not coming to me the manifestation is not coming to me i'm going to to it so if i wait for something i mean if i know for example you're like let's say going on vacation in 10 days your dream destiny and you cannot wait to go there but what are you doing for those 10 days? You're not just sitting and waiting mm -hmm. and like being stressful. You're going to, I don't know, pack yourself, prepare yourself. Oh, yes. Buy new things. Like, I don't know, get Make your Make a book. whole plan of what yes. you're going to do there. Yes, maybe do a little Google research. I don't know about restaurants. And just I like mm -hmm. to play a lot. So when I'm waiting for something, I like to play with the idea of it. Mm -hmm. And just like doing my own things that are connected to it. But like just having this feeling right now of that manifestation. I love that. <laughs> Have you ever visualized yourself being in a podcast studio and recording? Never. An episode? Never? Never. Maybe this is something that I have to contribute in your life. This was like, you invited me. I'm like, let's yeah. let's do it, you know? I'm, I, I came here today and I just had in my mind, oh, what are we going to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. I don't care. This yeah. is going to be great, you know? Yeah. I'm like super, I mean, I'm grateful and excited and maybe this brings new ideas to me and to you and this is mm -hmm. the perfect purpose of it yeah i love positive energy and positive people me too
really. It, there's no, never a coincidence how people meet. Never. I actually, how we met? Were we going to church or something? Was there oh, like yeah. a holiday? <laughs> yeah, we went to this church, to yeah. this Serbian church in LA. And I noticed that a lot of Serbians here, they have a very strong American accent when they speak in Serbian. Oh, they do. Yeah. And do I have a very strong oh. accent in my Serbian? I, I can mean, express myself. Right? Yeah, yeah, I can. No, your Serbian is really fluent. I mean, mm -hmm. I hear that you were not born and raised there, obviously. It's <laughs> obviously. normal. But your Serbian is like, I understand everything. It's perfect, actually. It's yeah, pretty fluent. Thank you. It, it, <laughs> it's getting better and better the more I surround myself with Serbian Yeah, people. exactly. I mean, yeah. same as English, right? Yeah, same as English. Your English is very good, by the way. Really? Thank yeah, you. Oh. Yeah, I know how you, uh, how you, your English was like four years ago, but now I can see the way you express yourself. It's even oh. better than then. You know what's funny? I don't really talk on English a lot. You Serb you do Serbian content on social yeah, media, yeah. right? Super Balance is also in Serbian. Why not in English? Well, I'm planning something else, like for the English. I mean, English content, a content on English. Uh, I want to build a new community because I cannot. I mean, to me, I just started like first I started in English, and then well, this happened when I was in Serbia, and then I realized okay, my I mean audience is mostly it's not Serbians only, it's like Balkans, so Croatian people, Montenegrin, Bosnian people that live abroad but are like Serbs, mm -hmm. and then my con I mean my community is only women, women only, and I love that, and I just when I wanted to like switch completely towards the audience in English, mm -hmm. I felt like I first should do this because that's my heart. Like I'm from yeah. there and I want to contribute. And this is like my way of contributing to awakening and really developing mindset and emotional intelligence in Balkans. So once I'm, I really enjoy it and I'm happy. And uh, I mean, I love it. I see like um, the progress every day, every new day. I mean, I have my plans for Serbia and like Balkans for super balanced. Meanwhile, I'm developing something for the audience, I mean, here and in Europe. Mm -hmm. But it takes time, as I said. I mean, everything comes in time. And when I feel that I'm ready to, like, really dedicate myself and um, trust in my abilities. Like, also had this barrier in English. I mean, I'm thinking, like, okay, I live in LA. Of course, I Same. speak in English here, definitely, to yeah. people. Yeah. But my friends, my husband, like, everybody around me, they're Ser I, I talk Serbian, like, my, most of the time. But I read in English more than Serbian. So all mm -hmm. that you, you hear right now, it's actually what I read. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. talk about these things to anybody, mostly, yeah. you know. But why? Do you think that here your friends and your, like your circle is just not very spiritual? Well, I mean... Or you're ashamed to talk about it? Mm. Because I had that in one coaching, a girl asked me, like, you know, sometimes I w she not asked me, she, is, she made a clear statement, actually. Mm -hmm. It's like, sometimes I want to contribute something and to say something that I that you taught me in the coaching and I really see it from your perspective. Mm -hmm. But then I'm afraid to bring it up at the table because I think that people will think I'm crazy. Oh, everybody thinks I'm crazy. My husband thinks I'm crazy. And he's I, not I spiritual at all. You. He is spiritual. And you say thank you. I say thank you. That's a You compliment. say thank you to your husband yeah. when he thinks that you're crazy. Yes. I, I truly mean it. Yeah. Thank you because that means that, I mean, <laughs> he's like, yeah. oh my God. I mean, he is very spiritual. He's very open-minded. He supports me 100%. Mm -hmm. But the way I look at things, as more time goes, I'm more and more spiritual and aware. So some things that do not disturb me at all, at all I'm like completely casual about it. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, you're crazy. And I used to, sometimes I talk like from philosophical point of view, you know, and like trying to gain other perspectives. I, I'm not afraid to bring that at the table, but I'm, as I'm saying, I don't have a lot of American friends or like foreign friends. I have some, you know, mm -hmm. but I feel also that's kind of maybe my, I mean, little struggle here in LA that I have not found community American or like on English yeah. that I can really, I mean, immerse myself in and really express myself in English. So, okay, I see. Oh, you know, I do that in my coaching. So mm -hmm. in my coachings, I can talk about my purpose in life mm -hmm. yeah? because mm -hmm. that's the topic that I'm the best 
mm-hmm. when it comes to mindset mm-hmm. and positive way of thinking. And then I have my friends. They mm-hmm. know another side of me. Mm-hmm. You know, they support me fully what I do. Sometimes they would also consult me for some. <laughs> of course, know, things. it's normal. Yeah. But it's different when you have clients and when you have a friend circle. No, so different. It's of so course. different. Yeah. 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 And I have like this different, how do you say, like, lives that I that everything is a part of me mm-hmm. and I'm enjoying to have like a role in every exactly. in every Roles. world yeah. yeah me too it's, yeah because I don't like to be always a coach no, I like to be human I like to make same, mistakes same I like yeah. to have fun I like to have a drink me too I swear a lot I mean sometimes you know I'm yeah so <laughs> like <laughs> it's so Serbian oh my god yes um, yeah. it's not always I mean everything has like roots yeah. deep down in things we're talking through but it's just like not everybody's ready for these big talks all the time. I also like to relax and just like, I don't know. But if you're working on yourself every single day and I guess you have like routines when mm-hmm. you get up in the morning and when you go to bed, how do you feel that your husband is not supporting you about that what you truly are? He is 100% supporting But me. he thinks you're crazy and he's not spiritual. You know what I mean? Or um, maybe I should he's put it saying, in a- He's saying it in a fun way. Okay. I mean, not really like... He's not like, oh, you're crazy. No, he's like, haha, you're crazy. Like, I like this, haha. It's more okay. in a funny way. Yeah. Yeah. But I know he thinks it. He's like, I don't even know how to explain. For example, I can sit like for one hour and like stare at one point, mm-hmm. And then I'm just like going through some ideas. I'm having my moment. And he's like, oh my God, you're crazy. When I start to really connect the dots from my childhood, for example, my favorite book was Harry Potter. And I was waiting for this letter from Hogwarts to arrive <laughs> when I was 13 to get me there. I really believed in magic. I always believed in magic. So I love that. Me too. Yes, me too. and it exists, actually, 100%. So, yes, it really does exist. Yeah. So when I connected it and I realized I'm living it and I can actually do it. By the way, I mean... I don't know if it's a good time to say it. Or not. It's always the right time. Yeah, <laughs> but I have these gifts as well, like intuitive gifts mm-hmm. that not a lot of people know. So I can read cards if I can share it now. Can you do that with me? Uh, I want to share what happened to me the other day. You Have you watched? I can do it with you later on. Yeah. Uh, if you want. Do you know it was World Cup right now, the other day mm-hmm. it finished? I did not watch it. I don't watch football. I don't. To me... I mean, I don't want to say it's a waste of time, but to me it's like, it's a game, you know? I don't really watch it. But then on 10th of December, when I knew the, like, the last four teams that are going to play, which is like France, Morocco, Croatia, and Argentina, they didn't play the games. It was like before semifinals, when, the, when we found the winner and the second place and the third and the fourth. That day, I, I remember this because um, the finals were like 18 or 19 of December, so like 10 days later almost. Mm-hmm. So I kind of uh, did not pay attention. So when we found out, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> that must come from meditation. Huh? Could yes. it be that you reached a higher <laughs> level? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. this is not like every day, I don't want people to like call me now. My husband was like, okay, so now get ready, we're going to Vegas. <laughs> I want to win the lottery with you. <laughs> well, we, we play, you know what's funny? Oh my God, this is so funny. Well, for example, if I play the lottery and I'm like, I put the numbers 10, 20, 30, the numbers that come on the lottery are like 11, 31, 21. You know, like they're like so close. By one. Oh. Yeah, it happened a few times to me. So I'm like, I need to like tune in more. <laughs> Maybe the universe <laughs> just wants to let you know that there is another way to get yes. away to the rich and abundant life. Because it's already exactly. here. Yeah. Yeah, it's already I, who you are. Yeah, I know. I'm working yeah. on these concepts, you know, I like through my fears from like, uh-huh. I don't know, generational, I don't want to say traumas, but you know, like we all have our topics. Mm-hmm. And to me, is this kind of abundance and stuff like that. So when my husband was like, we're going to Vegas now and we can earn uh, millions because you, I mean, you guessed the, f- like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, actually, maybe let's do it for $10,000. And he's like, why $10,000? It's nothing. <laughs> but I realized maybe I don't really value my gifts that much, you know, that mm-hmm. I can trust them right now. So this takes practice too. Yeah, and it's coming more and more, year by year for sure. Yes, 
I'm excited about what's to come. But this is just one, I mean, because you asked me about spiritual awakening, so this was the this is my long response. I'm sorry. <laughs> but when I really realized that I can get some hints yeah. and information, um I'm like, I love this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If there is one thing that every listener can do at home, what would just what what, what would be your advice that they can just mm. take action right now and work on themselves start spending time in silence you don't have to i mean people are like oh i have thoughts i cannot meditate just set the f like distractions don't read don't look at the phone don't eat don't like just sit can you sit with yourself people mm -hmm. can't it's uncomfortable because it starts to come uh, like so many thoughts and feelings repress things so you need to start clearing that in order to have a clear channel mm -hmm. Detoxing exactly the outside world. Like detox your energy. Just spend 20, 30 minutes at home by yourself doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And if you do it for like 10 days in a row, it's nothing. It costs nothing. Just being. And then you start to notice some other things like your ideas, creative hints, intuitive hits, you mm -hmm. know. And then this is how you do it for free. Like you don't need anything. Mm -hmm. But people <laughs> need a guide nowadays because otherwise oh. they would not go through the whole no. process. It's painful. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Because when when you start sitting down and things are starting to come up from your subconscious, well, you need somebody to help you process it definitely mm -hmm. because it can be really uncomfortable and then you don't have experience. You don't know that. People don't, I mean, how can they know techniques? We're just about to start learning that. Publicly. Again. <laughs> Again. This uh -huh. is all ancient knowledge. Yeah. The, if I channel something, this is like up for everybody. This is just one possibility. This is not like, oh, it's 100%. You know, we always mm -hmm. have this. It can be this way. It can be this way. This was just like the highest probability of happening energetically. Mm -hmm. And energy didn't change in 10 days. I mean, that's, this is how it happened. But I could be wrong and I would be fine with it. I don't care. This was for fun. I see. I, so. I mean, everything <laughs> that we just went through has already been outside. Yeah. But the way yes. that we created our own world with our family, with our, like the books that we read, the friends we had or mm -hmm. have, you know, this is like creating your own world. And then you have to think about all the other worlds out there, like mm. the galaxies as well. We're now here in this one no. galaxy, but there are millions of galaxies yeah. out there. So why don't you zoom out of it exactly. and decide where you really want to go and where you belong? Mm. Beautiful perspective. But, uh, well, it's limitless. You know, I, I, who's saying that I, I only want to stay here in this galaxy? Maybe in my meditation, I go to another different uh, galaxy <laughs> where I'm the queen. I'm always seeing myself in my med meditation as oh, a queen. Really? This is why I have this energy when I go into a room. It's like Queen Mira is here. Like this is the energy that I'm giving. But the queen is a good person. She helps yes. other people. She's always friendly. She She's likes wise. Dress. Yeah, the, this is a queen. I love that. It's not um, arrogant. It's self-esteem. A self-confident -con person is a giver. How can I help you to lift you up? What can I do for you that you feel better, that you yeah. can go further, that you can achieve something? Like Because I know how it works. Let's share the knowledge. You're acting from love and arrogance is acting from fear. Yeah. You need to put somebody down in order to go up. Exactly. Yeah. And the influencers in Switzerland, I experienced this one situation where someone said like, I'm sorry, you cannot sit with me. And I'm like, excuse what? me? What? Yeah, yeah. Recently? You know, to, no, no, no. That was years ago, oh, you know. Oh, oh. Where I'm like, is that really the way to go? That you're telling other people not to sit with you? This is arrogance. arrogance. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is so sad. Hope the person found their way. Yeah, me too. Me too. But that was a huge lesson when I experienced it, you know, because it, it didn't happen to me. I have mm -hmm. to say it happened to other people, like to the makeup team and here, like here at Makeup, you know, mm -hmm. and they shared the story with me. Mm. And I was so in shock because when this girl came to me, actually, I now I have to, okay, let's take Now it. you have to tell me the story. Now I have to tell you the story. Oh. Okay, so I was there at an event, right? And then okay. mm -hmm. I was connected with everyone because I love people. I'm a people person, as you know. Mm -hmm. And then they were sitting with me and then this one girl came and she said like, can I sit with you and I'm like sure why are you actually asking oh and then she said because this other girl told me that I cannot sit 
with her. I'm like, I'm not this other girl. Please take a seat and sit with us. Wow. And, you know, that was like something. I know who this girl is, and she's beautiful, amazing, successful and everything. But it hurts to know that people think this way now of a person because of this one thing that happened. I mean, maybe she had a bad day. That's maybe what I wanted to say. But maybe even, sometimes you're sick. But you need to... Yeah. I mean... But people talk. Yes. You know, maybe she could be like, no, please, I would like to be by myself because I have something going on. Yeah. Th this would be me, you know? Yeah. Just explain yourself. So you're still friendly. You're still a queen. You're the giving person. But you're self-aware. Self-aware. So that's the difference. Yeah. Now so I share the whole story, yeah. actually. <laughs> I, I want to give like pieces. But it makes so much yeah. sense. But when mm. we are hurt, when we are like nervous, when we are angry... And every little thing disturbs us. So yeah. this is the way to protect ourselves. But why do people forget in this certain situation that they're still giving an energy to a person? You're putting out energy and you're receiving the same. Yeah. You have to change your frequency. Nobody knows it. I mean, who, not a lot of people know about that. That's why there is a lot of issues around it. Talking about this right now because we learned it, Mira. I mean, we remembered but we, like, we had I to... I got goosebumps now. Yeah. <gasps> really? Yeah, I got goosebumps. So it means when you said it. We had to dig for that. And it takes time. It takes self-isolation in a way. So in, you need to go back in order to go forward and, like, give to others. Yeah. So that also means, like, risk of what if people fail you? What if, like, if what if you fail? I don't know. Maybe this need for instant improvement and validation is what is stopping a lot of people from going deeper. Because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I'm going to miss out. You know this FOMO thing? I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, fear of, uh, fear missing, of missing out. out. So it's I heard kind of, that for the first yeah. time here in LA. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about that. So, well, yeah. you can only miss out on yourself, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you cannot miss... You cannot... Not be where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> Okay, let's say you have an invitation to go to a party. Yeah. This is maybe something... I wish yeah. people had more... Uh, LA had more parties. In, yeah, I know. Honestly. I know. It's a little bit different than I imagined. But oh. <laughs> maybe then you're missing out to yeah. go there because you got the invitation from the universe. Maybe there is this one person that can change your life mm -hmm. forever. Maybe a friendship, mm -hmm. maybe a love, romance, and experience. Maybe then you're missing out. But if you have to make it really hard to go somewhere... Oh, yeah. This yeah, is yeah. You're against. trying too hard. Exactly. Yeah, you're trying too hard. Then you're trying too hard. You, you're not missing out. Then better stay where you are. Exactly. I agree. Right? That's how I feel. Like, mm -hmm. everywhere, when, I'm, when, I'm, when we talked before the podcast, it's flowing. Yes. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. I don't even have awareness of time, to be honest with you. I don't it even know what time like, it is. It could be 30 minutes. It could be 15 minutes. I don't know. I, I forgot. I, even now, <laughs> I know it's like 1 p.m. I don't know when we started, actually. Who cares? But do you We're see how it time. works when once you're in a flow? Yeah, I love this. I'm so, like, uh, I'm so grateful that I'm here. And thank you for inviting me. And let's, yeah. let's head to some party, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And sometime soon. <laughs> yeah, and, and show me where you live, how you live your life. I'm still here and I want to know everything. Oh, I'm going to talk you through when we, if you go for lunch later or coffee. But anyways, to me, yeah. I would love to have more even like going out in L.A. Mm -hmm. I don't have this fear of missing out, but I feel like L.A. as a city, like after pandemic and everything, kind of shut down a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of socializing and like going out and having fun. So... This is what I'm missing, but I don't know. Okay, if now this comes from a Serbian girl who was born uh, and raised in Belgrade. Yeah, yeah, so I can never, <laughs> I can never expect actually don't expect that. Don't Belgrade no, here in LA. I know, but that's, yeah. why, that's why I love to go to Belgrade. I mean, often now, mm -hmm. because I can experience that kind of fun side. I mean, this is balance. My life in LA is nothing like a Hollywood red carpet. No, it's very like calm and like cozy and mm -hmm. I enjoy my own time I go to nature you know super balanced yeah <laughs> and then I go I mean then I go to Serbia mm -hmm. and I go out and like you know have fun too so being free is being who you truly are right when you're just yeah. free then I'm me oh yeah I have to be free in order to be me. <laughs> I love this. Like yeah. This is like a little affirmation. A How do you say that? Yeah. Yeah. Motivational yeah. quote. 
You just came up with it? Yeah, I don't know why, because it, it. It, it rhymes, you know, me it and It rhymes, free. yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> I always call but it. But it can go the other way around too. I have to be me in order to be free. <gasps> I love that. And I said, what did I say? <laughs> I have to, <laughs> to be, be free, free to be me. me. We can use those two and maybe do something with it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, investing your time here in the studio today. Oh. I can't wait to sit down after this podcast and have a proper conversation with you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> talk about it. It's things. been four years. Oh my God. But I feel yeah. like we really talked through a lot today. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'm feeling hyped, even like inspired now. Even more yeah. creative than before. So thank you so much for like sparking that inside of me. <laughs> oh, wow. What a compliment. Thank you. Of thank course. you. You're very welcome. You, when, what I figured out is when you lose track of time, you know you're doing the right thing. You're living in the present yeah. moment. <laughs> But there are some action you're losing your time. Mm -hmm. Because track of time is not the same like you're losing yeah. time. Yes. Right? Yes. This is like such a gain. I feel like I gained time. <laughs> yeah, you gained time. And I gained you, not only as a podcast interview, so. but also as a friend, someone I can rely on in this city. And I'm yes. so happy that we have the same We actually, device. yeah, have yeah. to really reconnect and like do our things yeah. again, finally. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Mira. Oh, Thank another you. beautiful episode on my Instagram <laughs> slash Spotify account. Thank you so much, dear listeners, for supporting this podcast. Road to Success is not only Road to Success by Mira, it's your road to success. It's the road to success of Tsetsa and her super balanced business because now that you grow, your business grows with you. Mm -hmm. I love that. We're all on a journey and I love to support beautiful people who are shining from the inside and spreading this with the world. And Thank you so much. Just being themselves. Thank you. I, I love this. Thank, thank you, you for your time and thank you for inviting me. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you to listeners. <laughs> thank you so much, world. I love you and see you um, next week with a new guest and a new road to success. 